Dave out here from the Axiom Body Piercing Studio in Des Moines, Iowa. Coming up right now, Body Piercing Basics number four. Covering our fourth installment on vocabulary, we're going to talk about body piercing jewelry materials today. So stick around. So, what we're going to do is kind of go through some of the most common or often used terms when it comes to body piercing jewelry to give you kind of a, a, an understanding of the vocabulary and hopefully you can have an educated discussion about jewelry the next time you go in to get a piercing um, or are buying new jewelry. First thing we're going to talk about is third party verification of the material and testing. Uh, the most common or what you're going to hear a lot in the United States, ASTM International. And what it stands for is the American Society for Testing in Materials. It is a third party uh, laboratory that tests the quality level and what exactly is in whatever alloy or uh, material that's being used in body piercing, at least when it comes in reference to that. It's also used for a lot of different type of electronics and electrical equipment and various other things they test, uh, but they are an industry standard. So when we're talking ASTM and we have a number after that, or um, letters in a number, we're talking about something that has been certified that it is the proper material. Biocompatibility. When I'm talking about biocompatibility, what I'm talking about is something that can that can be inside the body in contact with the skin for a long period of time without causing issues. Um, and we're going to get into some of the materials that are biocompatible and some that aren't. But it's a term that sometimes used. So that the shoes a lot is implant grade or implant level. Um, anodized. Anodized um, comes up when we're talking about jewelry that's of different colors. Uh, most commonly, titanium and niobium are the two times that's going to be coming up, and we'll get into what those materials are here in a little bit. But basically, um, what happens is they apply electricity to the surface of the metal, and it changes the reflection of light. Thus, you get all these different colors, or anywhere from um, with niobium, you get that dark black all the way up to really light pinks and purples and yellows and even a gold tone. Annealed. Annealed is a process that they go through with metals that they soften the material somewhat while keeping its durability and strength. Um, it makes it easier to bend or twist jewelry um, when needed with certain types of jewelry um, or styles like beadless or seamless where it does require that you bend it in that corkscrew pattern it makes it very easy to work with that jewelry and it's usually a sign that because they want to that extra step it's more expensive to wire to work with so it's more expensive jewelry made out of more expensive expensive materials this brings us to the first material implant grade surgical stainless steel uh, implant grade surgical stainless steel is a workhorse of the body piercing industry. Uh, it has been around the longest. It is probably one of the most common materials that you're going to find. Though a lot of people only stock titanium for various different reasons. Uh, mainly because a lot of it does contain a small amount of nickel. However, it is a very durable, inexpensive, not, not cheap, but inexpensive material that can that has, uh, can last in the body for a long period of time. Um, it does not, is not affected by wear and tear like other materials are. Very strong and very easy to work with. Most medical equipment is actually made of the same material. Now here we get into that thing where we're talking about numbers and so forth. The most common alloy is gonna be 316 or 316L or 316LVM. The first three numbers uh, determine exactly how much of each piece of, or each type of material is in that alloy. Each percentage. The L stands for lead. Yes, there is lead in surgical stainless steel. The uh, LVM would determine whether or not it was, it was smelted in a um, vacuum environment which is going to give it less impurities for that reason. So that's kind of a nonsense number because that number 316 or 316 LVL is used for everything from high grade medical equipment and body placement materials all the way down to motorcycle spokes. 
So that's why it's important we start paying attention to the ASTM number and deciding whether or not it is of a pure, if it's a pure enough alloy, then it's going to be safe to have in the body. And with that one, the number you want to look for is ASTM F138. Niobium is a pure element. Uh, there's no alloy. It is what it is. It tends to be expensive and hard to find and hard to manufacture. It used to be probably one of the most common materials used in body piercing in the 90s. If you saw anything that was iodized that came in various different colors, it was probably made of niobium. Titanium, which is a little bit more inexpensive, kind of took over that whole market, and there was kind of a shortage of niobium, which affected sales. But you don't need to have any alloy. It's a very strong material. It's often a very dense. It can be kind of hard to work with sometimes because it's kind of stiff. Um, however, you can get those really, really dark colors with it, especially if you want black jewelry. That's the only way that you're going to get it is with niobium. Titanium. Titanium is an alloy, just like in plant grade steel. Uh, it comes in various different forms, um, various different alloys for various different usage. When we're talking about biocompatible or in plant grade, we are talking, let's go back to the ideas. TM number ASTM F136 is what you are looking for. The advantages of titanium is not only can you iron, um, uh, uh, <laughs> you can anodize it and get those different colors and color patterns, but it's also very durable and it does not contain nickel in its alloy. So it's a little bit more safe for people that may be sensitive to nickel. Usually in its purest form, it has a silver tone to it, almost as kind of a dull aluminum to almost, almost looks like stainless steel, almost has that mirror finish. Um, that said, titanium can vary greatly in material and it can also vary greatly in the quality of the jewelry. Just because it says titanium does not necessarily mean that it is biocompatible. Next, that brings us to another element, gold. However, with gold, we're not unlike niobium. It is so soft and very expensive that it needs other materials added to it in the form of an alloy to make it strong enough, durable enough to be worn in the body and not cause issues. So we usually we're looking at carat weight and carat weight determines it's anywhere from, I don't know if zero carat weight gold exists. That would not be gold, would it? Um, goes up to 24 carats, 24 carats being the purest. Generally with body piercing jewelry, what we're looking at is that kind of sweet spot. 14 carat and 18 carat is what we're looking for. Um, and the reason being is that's going to contain the least amount of other additives in it. It's going to be closer to the pureness of uh, a pure element, gold. Um, it also is going to be less likely to have things in it like nickel, which does exist in some of the smaller carat weights. So. And with that, you're pretty much at the leisure or at the uh, mercy of whoever manufactured it as to what the carat weight is and what the other items in the jewelry alloy are, what other metals were used. I'm not a big fan of piercing with gold. A lot of people, and I, I did a whole video basically covering that and why I don't think it's the best choice and a whole video talking about the different types of things that are in gold. And if you want to take a look at it, you can click on the I here or I will list it in the description below. Now we move on to glass. Glass is probably one of the newest of all the forms of jewelry um, materials. Uh, it is a Pilex type glass, basically the same that is used for cookware. Um, it's very durable, very strong. Usually uh, to break it, you're going to have to drop it from a high weight onto something that's extremely hard. Um, for example, dropping it waist height or tiler um, onto concrete. And when it does break, it usually doesn't shatter into sh really small pieces. It usually just kind of cracks or breaks into two or three pieces. So it's something you can wear in the body for a long period of time. It also doesn't react to... Um, electric current, it's not a conducted, it doesn't react to, uh, it's not magnetic. So it's something you wear in a piercing if you're going in for a medical procedure where they're avenant about you removing all your jewelry, such as surgery or some type of um, scan, such as an MRI. 
Unlike other materials, which we're going to get to a little bit later, the nice thing about glass is it doesn't have it's doesn't have that chemical compound. It's more durable. It doesn't scratch easy. It doesn't deteriorate the way that uh, the plastics do. So it's a lot safer to wear in your body for a long period of time. And it's one of those things I suggest that hey, if you're going to have a lot of medical um, procedures that are going to require you to move the jewelry from your piercing, but you want to keep it open, it's a good idea to go with glass. Glass is going to work well for you. Dental acrylic. Dental clear. Ah, dental acrylic. <laughs> Dental acrylic or acrylic jewelry um, is kind of an interchangeable thing. It is a hard plastic. It is a chemical compound um, used a lot with oral piercings with the idea that it will give before your teeth and gums and etc. give. The disadvantage of it is that because it is not that durable, it scratches very easily. It deteriorates inside the mouth and in other piercings and it can break down. Now, whether or not once it breaks down, you're going to have that plastic go entering into your body and possibly being toxic has always been a question. Um, there's no proof that it is. It's, for the most part, safe. Um, but it's definitely something you can't wear for 10 or 15 years. It's something you have to replace, in some cases, monthly. So always take that into account when you're looking at acrylic jewelry. It's not your best option. It brings the other uh, chemical-based material, bioplastic. Bioplastic is like a tubing, um, kind of like a monofilament line, which was a common thing that we suggested or used in jewelry uh, as a way to keep a piercing open during a medical procedure or what have you, and I've suggested it in the past, and it's worked really well with clients, but it's not a long-term solution or something I would suggest wearing in your body for a long period of time, just like bioplastic. Bioplastic is supposed to be a safer ver version or alternative, I should say, not so much version, to monofilament line. However, I'm still leery of anything that's made of plastic. The other thing is it's not very rigid, so it can cut piercings to heal in kind of odd odd shapes and odd odd paths meaning that changing to a straight piece of jewelry after you've had it in there may be a chore um, so it's not your best option for long-term wear I'm not a big fan of it natural materials the last one on the list natural materials um, are materials that are organic uh, these come in various different forms. They're usually used for mostly stretched ears, for things like plugs, eyelets, hangers, etc. Um, they can be made of fossils, uh, semi-precious stones, bone, um, antler, teeth I've seen, um, and hardwoods. They usually take a little bit more maintenance because they can crack under some of the pressure that, especially with the woods, um, under the pressure that your body puts things through. Uh, if you wear it for a long period of time, there is a possibility of it breaking off the finish and, and kind of deteriorating the jewelry over time, causing it to crack or dry out. Uh, the advantage of it I've heard, never really played with it myself, but with large gauge plugs, it kind of takes some of the smell out of it. Um, the the uh, wood seems to absorb it, but you do need to oil the wood on a regular basis and take care of it. Stones and etc. Not as much maintenance. Uh, you do want to make sure that the quality of the stuff is high quality. That there is a finish or polish on it. Uh, generally, what I suggest is running your finger along the surface. If it's rough or it doesn't seem smooth, it's not going to be a high quality piece of jewelry. And you've got to keep in mind that piercings are scar tissue that are kind of sensitive, sometimes very thin. So if you're rubbing against that rough surface all the time, it is going to agitate the piercing. So. That's, that's all the materials that I'm going to discuss today. Hope you learned some new terms. Hope you know a little bit more about jewelry and what you need to look for when you go out and purchase that. Uh, if I've missed something, because I do that occasionally, I'm human, uh, leave a comment. Or if you feel like I haven't answered your question correctly or you, you don't agree with me for whatever reason, please leave a comment. I love to discuss things. I, I love to learn things. That's the whole point of this thing. Also, Give it, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Um, also, uh, subscribe. Uh, I put these out on a regular basis. Uh, we also do videos um, that focus on tattooing and etc. And if you don't want to miss anything, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Until then, I hope to see you for your piercing needs in the future.